Today, we'll take a look inside this season's curiosity box. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll be able to decide for yourself if it's worth it or not. And I think out of all of the STEM subscription boxes, this one's the one I wanted to try the most. So when they reached out to me and asked if I want to get one for review, I took embarrassingly little time to say yes, especially since watching Vsauce all those years ago is what got me into this mess. So let's take a look, test things out. It should be pretty fun. Now, I should say that usually I'm quite skeptical on subscription boxes like this one because it always feels like a bit of a gamble on whether you're going to get something actually cool or it's going to be a bit of a filler. But I did take a look at what's inside before doing my embarrassingly quick agreement to getting one. And it does seem quite unique. So let's take a look and straight away on the packaging. You can see there is a bit of optical illusion going on. Well, this, this way it says space time. And then this way it says mass energy. And in the middle of all this, there is a constellation. So nice to see that packaging is pretty well thought out. Then the first thing you see is the Curiosity magazine, which says Curiosity and magazine, which goes through the explanations for everything that's going to be in the box. Now, it would make sense for me to read through all of this before going through the rest of the box, so that could give you maybe a little bit more of an explanation for each one. But let's keep it as first look for now. And then you get similar thing, but in a you know, postcard format. Then you get a t-shirt, which is quite nice. We'll take a look at the graphic in a little bit. This one's I'm most excited about. So apparently you can measure time as well as space, so distance. So let's see how that's going to work. Then you get some slap bracelets. They're always fun. Some siphon straws in very 90s packaging. And finally, quite a chunky book. So let's go through all of them one by one. So let's start with the slap bracelets. When they're all three together, it's a lot tougher than one. Uh, this one's nice and easy. It's just a ruler in bracelet form. And if you've seen Adam Savage's formerly of Mythbusters tattoo, which is like a ruler on his forearm, I kind of always wanted one, but I don't want a permanent tattoo, so this is a nice halfway house. And the second one is probably even more useful. So it's also a ruler, but it can measure the diameter, I think. Yes, so it measures a diameter of a cylinder. And obviously if you want to measure a circumference of a cylinder, you could use this one. And then the last one is a bit more odd. So apparently this one I did have to read about. If you're lost in time, you can cross-reference appropriate treasure, shipwreck, or long lost book to reveal your location and prove that you're from the future. So as you can see here, it talks about HMS Endurance, Titanic and their coordinates. Not sure how it would work exactly. Do do I need to go to those coordinates and see if it's there? Because if that's so, that seems to be a very difficult way, probably the most difficult way of figuring out where you are. Or do you go, like, I'm from the future. I can prove it. I know about the Titanic. And then people are like, what the hell is Titanic? So maybe some non-man-made events would have been nice. I don't know. What, what could you use to actually prove that you're from the future apart just based on your knowledge and not um, an actual object? That would be an interesting one. Staying on the topic of measuring things, the four-dimensional tape measure has me intrigued, to say the least. I've read a little bit about how it works, but it's time to see if it works. So 
So on the surface, just a normal tape measure, apart from this bit maybe. And this bit was designed specifically to measure time. Uh, but you have your normal distance increments, but if you see here, it also has time increments. And the way it, uh, and the way it works is like a pendulum. So you hang it on something, and then you swing it, and then the time it takes to swing back is how you can measure time. So let me find something that I can pendulum up. So I have fi finally found the suitable ledge to test out the pendulum. I've got my stopwatch here, and I'm going to try to measure two seconds like that. So what I need to do is to raise it up, up to about 60 degrees. Uh, as long as it's below 60 degrees, it shouldn't matter. And then I'll let it go, and to swing there and back, it should take about two seconds. So Ah, oh, that's that was actually fairly precise. Look at that. I'm not sure if it's my timing skills or the pendulum skills, but I am fairly impressed. I think it's not the first time me trying to swing it. I've swung it all around the house, and this hook, though they say it was specifically designed to swing, I have my doubts because it takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, it's pretty good. So let's try again. And again, 1.91. So according to the Curiosity magazine, this goes up to five meters because above that, it's just impractical to use it to measure time. And it goes up to about 3.5 seconds. So let's see what that is. And 3.5 seconds is 3.7 meters. And I think even at this point, it's already pretty impractical to use this to measure time single-handedly. Maybe if someone was upstairs and like holding it out of a window and then I could swing it, that could be a thing. Uh, but yeah, I think two seconds uh, proves a point, but I'm glad that it's a long safe measure. It'll definitely get some use in the toolbox. And then added benefit of uh, whenever anyone asks me for a tape measure, I can ask them if they want to measure distance or time and just see the confusion on their faces. So I think this gets a thumbs up from me. Next up is a siphon straw. And having a four-year-old in the house, I think this will get a lot of use. And apparently it's self-priming, so you usually have to suck through the straw to get the siphoning effect. Um, I don't give a legal advice, but that's how you siphon out fuel from a car. But this one's apparently self-priming, self so all you have to do is insert it, shake it, and it should work. So let me get some water and then see how it works. So literally, just as I was saying, mm, I'm not sure it's quite working, turned around for a second, and it made such a mess. So let's now do this properly. Let's test this out. So put it in, shake it a little bit, and we wait. Then you realize that you didn't do it correctly. Then you shake it a little bit again, and then we wait. And the way it works is quite quite simple, actually. So at the end here, you get a little silicon tip. And inside the silicon tip, there is a little ball bearing. So every time you shake it up and down, the bearing jumps up and down. But on the way down, it plugs the hole in the straw and pushes the liquid all the way through the straw. Then on the way up, it takes more liquid in and then into the silicon bit, and then on the way down, it pushes it again to begin the process. So that's why it's called self-priming. So I think this one is quite a fun experiment to do a few times, but beyond that, I don't think it'll get much use. Uh, you could, apparently, well, not apparently, you could totally use it as a normal straw like this, 
which I wouldn't recommend because it would be an absolute pain to wash. But I think my biggest complaint here is that this little bit is made of rigid plastic and not silicon or something like that. So when I was just playing around with it, it just kind of snapped, which isn't really fun. So I guess I have just two normal straws now. I'm going to try to 3D print a replacement out, out of TPU. But if it's out and about, like in the house, I could see it getting snapped quite easily. So it'll probably just sit in the experiments box, which we get out once in a while. Without knowing what's inside, I'm really excited to see what this book has to offer because, as you might know, animal architecture inspires a lot of real-world engineering creations. Planes, I think, is one of the most often seen examples on the internet where you'll see a picture of a plane compared to a picture of a bird diving. So in this book, there are lots of very high resolution pictures of different animal creations. There are bits on the purposes of the structure. Okay, a bit more explanation. And I think this could make an amazing coffee table book. So a kind of book that you just put in front of your sofa and from time to time you just open it in a random location, have a look at it. Very nice. And finally, we come to the t-shirt. Now, I am not getting too attached to this one. I am about 90% sure that my wife is going to steal this one from me. So if you ever see me wearing it, it's probably because I had to get written permission from her. So this details different ways of time travel. So it has uh, different times like the time loop where you constantly go back in time, branching timelines, multiverse, and next to each arrow, it has examples of movies where, where that happened. Now, can we find Back to the Future? Because I think that's probably the most famous time-related movie. Would it be Branching Timelines? Yeah, so you have Back to the Future 2, right under Avengers Endgame. It's kind of started looking at uh, four Avengers in the multiverse, but I think... That would have been after the Endgame movie. I was just having a look at how to wash this t-shirt and I found a cool little Easter egg. In here it says, and as always, thanks for watching, which is a nice callback to Vsauce saying, and as always, thanks for watching at the end of his videos. So that's quite nice. All right, so let's talk about value because that's usually a big question with these subscription boxes. And for the bracelets and the straws, I think I'd put them in the category of cool stuff you'd buy in a science museum gift shop or a similar shop, which has that sort of stuff. It's fun. It's nicely made. It's not everyday use, but kind of cool stuff to have around the house if you are that sort of house. Uh, I'd probably say for the bracelets, around, I don't know, £10. You can barely get anything for £10 these days. Similar for the straws, I'd say five, but... Now, the tape measure is really nice. I think it feels very well built. It does the full five meters. It'll definitely get some use just uh, in my toolbox. So it's not just a novelty thing, it's an actually useful thing with a bit of novelty in it. Now, T-shirt. I really like T-shirts like this. So it'll get a lot of use from me. I think ones like this usually go for about 25 pounds. So that's nice. And then the book, this one, don't have to guess because they have price in the back and that's 19 pounds. I think that's actually for 19 pounds, I'd buy this in a bookshop. I think if I didn't know the price, I'd say around 30 is what I'd expect to pay. So if we add all of this up, you're looking at about 70 pounds worth of stuff, there or thereabouts. Uh, the box itself goes for around $70 per box. Uh, so that's about 50 UK pounds, 70 in the US. So I think it's generally decent value. 
What I like that is that it's not just full of filler and throwaway bits. It's just a few very well-made, thought-out items. I'm a big fan of less is more approach, and that's definitely what they've done here. And if you want to get one as well, they do limited runs. So once a season's box sells out, that's it until the next one. And you can use my code from in the description for a small discount, and I'll get a bit back from that as well. Future Ivan here editing this video, and I said that you get a small discount, and it's actually quite generous. So Curiosity Box are offering 25% off the first box with the code MAKES25. And that helps to support the channel and basically helps me get materials for the projects that I will share on this channel. And I have one in the works right here. So video on that coming soon.